Hey everyone, welcome back to our playthrough of Lost Ruins of Arnak. We're going to be finishing up the game in this playthrough. Uh, first thing that I need to do is note a, um, a correction. I had an error in the last round when I had gone to discover a new site and I had placed my figure on the board. Uh, I forgot to discard a card from my play area to pay for the transportation costs, and it would have been one of my free action cards for uh, gold. So what I'm going to do then is just return this one gold to the supply to make it back where we would have been. It didn't really have an effect on the gameplay because I didn't take any actions that would have had um, a bad effect from that. So anyways, just to bring you up the speed real quick, uh, we've played the first two rounds of the game our moon staff has moved over to round three. So right now in our card row we have a split of, we have three of the artifact cards here. Three of the item cards are in the back. If we take a look on the, um, at the island itself, we have um, explored or discovered some new places. Uh, we each have overcome a, a guardian. I still have the boon available for mine for the scorpion to be able to draw a card, so we'll see if we're going to use that or not. And then finally, the last thing, let's take a look at the explore, the uh, research track. And we can see right now that the um, AI is one step ahead of me, uh, but I have made advances on both my magnifying glass and my notebook so I do have one assistant that is currently in play so uh, what we're gonna do is in this playthrough we're going to finish up our play of this game so we actually have three rounds to go uh, the action is gonna start ramping up because we have uh, more cards that are gonna come into play we're gonna be able to do more things so let's get to it so the AI is going to kick off the third round with an action of this time taking uh, the item card that has the lowest point value um, with its preference going to be uh, the one on the left. So looking at the card row for the items, the one that has the lowest point value is the hat. So this card will end up going into the AI's score pile. These cards will slide down and a new item will appear which is a carrier pigeon which is kind of cool as a free action I can get uh, two tablets okay so for my first turn to uh, kick off this round um, let's see what do I want to do right now I don't have any compass tokens so I'm not able to discover any new sites or uh, be able to purchase any cards from the row uh, at this point, I'm not sure if I want to send out one of my archaeologists or not. Uh, I have to look and see what I have available uh, to me. And uh, I guess on my turn, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'd like to be able to uh, move up on this research track. And so um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is playing I need to get some arrowheads because if we look at the research track where I'm at uh, the costs to be able to move up we are going to require um, arrowheads either moving up my uh, magnifying glass or if I'm going to move up the uh, briefcase both of those are going to require tablets and arrowheads so I think my best bet is to actually play a card from my hand that's going to allow me to do an upgrade. So I have this uh, Trader's Coins. So when I play it from my hand, I'm going to have to discard a, uh, a tablet in order to activate that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that now. Then what it will do is allow me to promote uh, an item. So what I'm going to do is turn a tablet into an arrowhead. So we'll turn that in. And I will grab this arrowhead there. And I'm also going to be able to receive two uh, gold coins as a result of that. Uh, I am not going to take any free action. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do, uh, maybe I'll get lucky and get another good card. 
is I am going to go ahead and use this boon from uh, this guardian and I'll be able to draw a card. So once I do that, I just turn this over and uh, I'm going to have five points at the end of the game and we'll go ahead and draw a card. And this is even better because now I'll be able to draw another card and immediately send out one of my um, ar archaeologists with a travel discount of one boat. So that's pretty good. All right, so back over to the AI. The AI turn, they are going to send out an archaeologist to a spot with the arrowhead on the board. So right now, if we look on the board itself, the only spot that's available is going to be this one back here. So we will place one of the archaeologist figures over there just like that. Okay, looking at my uh, cards and what I'm thinking about doing, uh, let's take a look at the board. This is a way to get additional resources. I, I have my eye on uh, this spot or the one actually behind it that will give me, I'll have a fear card, uh, but I'd also be able to get a jewel. Um, I do have a card that's in my deck that will allow me to get jewels, though. That's with the parrot. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is wanting to go to this particular space right here. And the way that I'm going to do this is by uh, playing a card first. So I am going to go ahead and use this sea turtle, which will allow me to draw a card. And then I'll be able to send out one of my archaeologists with a discount of one boat. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and draw a card. So this will give me this uh, that I can use as a free action. And I will go ahead and send out my archaeologist to that particular space on the board, which is right there, which will allow me to draw a card. So I have another card. So this is good. It's giving me a lot of um, a lot more to be able to do this particular round. And I'm also going to take a gold token and one of those tablets. Um, let's see, at this point, I don't know if there's anything that I want to do in terms of free actions this turn quite yet. So I decided I didn't want to take any free actions, so back to the AI, and whoop, he is going to put an archeologist out to a spot where there is a ruby, and so, again, talking about the hierarchy of, or preferences to where they're going to go, this is the space that he is going to take right there. So I'm thinking on my turn that I may want to uh, buy a card to put into my, uh, into my deck. So let's take a look at the uh, cards that are available. Specifically, I'm looking at buying an item. So these are the three item cards that we have currently uh, available. So I have the Steamboat as a free action. I can get two compass tokens. It will cost me three gold coins, and it's worth three points. That's very useful. Uh, this Torch, this one costs two gold coins. This will allow me to exile a card from my uh, play area and also be able to take a tablet uh, that's useful. I have a few fear cards that are in my deck right now. This would be a great way to get rid of them. Um, and then the last one is this carrier pigeon as a free action to be able to get two tablets. I think right now uh, my best bet here is uh, I would really like to be able to do some exploration and uh, be able to uh, further open up the, the board. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this uh, steamboat so I will pay the three gold coins and put that into my deck I'll go ahead and take care of paying that the, the card will go on the bottom of my draw pile and we will go ahead and slide these two down and a new card comes into play which is the ostrich which will allow me to draw a card and then I can um, go and send an archaeologist out with a discount of uh, an automobile, so that's a pretty useful card too, similar to the sea turtle. And I think at this point what I'm going to go ahead and do is use these two funding cards as free actions to go ahead and get two more 
gold coins. Um, I think that uh, I'm thinking about picking up that ostrich and uh, adding that to my deck as well. Let's see what the AI is going to do this turn. He's actually going to send out an archaeologist to a space where there are compass tokens, which over on the board is going to be this particular space right here. So another one of their archaeologists goes out and occupies that space. Okay, I think on this turn I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a move to do some research. So what I'm going to do is I would really like to move up my briefcase, our notebook actually, to the next level. So looking at the cost, I'm going to have to discard uh, one tablet and one arrowhead to be able to do that. So I'm going to take my arrowhead and tablet spend those and this we will cross over this bridge and as a benefit I will be able to get one of the three assistants that are available so looking at the three assistants that are out there uh, I have one where I can use them as an action to be able to take either a gold or basically use them as a pilot to produce uh, an airplane for traveling but I already have uh, some cards that are going to give me a discount for traveling, so this one may not be super useful. This one is uh, allows me to draw a card, but then I have to discard a card, so it's a way to go through my deck a little bit that's sort of useful. But I think the one that I've got my eye on the most is this particular assistant right here, where she will allow me to do... Whoops, sorry, I've got to get focused here. Uh, I will be able to... Uh, basically upgrade components that I have. So like tablets can turn into arrowheads, arrowheads can turn into uh, jewels. So I think this is going to be the best bet for me um, for being able to have flexibility to get some of those rarer resources. So this will go actually down on my player board next to the other assistant that I have in the other slot. I'll move it down there. So you can see it goes right there. And um, I think what I'm going to actually go ahead and do is uh, since it's a free action, I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to take this uh, tablet and I will turn it into an arrowhead and put it on my board there. Hey, the AI is going to uh, discover a new, uh, a new area. So this is round three, so it is going to be a level one. And the preference is going to be to the right. Uh, so right now it's also going to choose whatever is on the, would be the bottom row. So we only have this space available right here. So we will send one of their archeologists over there. They will collect this particular idol and we'll put it on its their board. And finally, we will go ahead and put out a new site. So this one is actually going to give you either um, two of the tr um, tokens, the compass tokens, or what we'll be able to do is uh, be able to uh, perform a buy action. We just don't have to pay for it. So that's kind of cool. You'd be able to pick up an item without having to pay its cost. So that's, that's a, a nice spot uh, potentially to visit next round. So I'm sitting on these three gold coins, which I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, use those to purchase a card. And I think um, I have an idea of what I'm going to pick up. I think at this point... Um, that uh, being able to have the flexibility to draw cards and uh, be able to put archaeologists out is going to be uh, beneficial. So um, I think that that ostrich that came out, this is going to be my choice. So it's going to cost me three coins, and that card will go into the bottom of my deck. We'll take our three coins, put those in the supply. This card will then go over onto the bottom of our draw stack and a new item card will come out which is a flask it says exile that card to draw three cards so that would be able to give somebody a big turn 
So back to my turn, I really would like to do some uh, exploration, uh, be able to find a new, a new site, but at this point I don't have enough of these uh, compass tokens to be able to do that, and if I use both of these as free actions, I won't have the proper transportation to be able to go out here. So I think what I need to do is uh, prep for the uh, next round, and I'm just going to go ahead and move here. So I will spend my transportation cost of one car and send my archaeologist to this space here, and I will get one gold coin and I will get two tablets. So maybe I'll have uh, another artifact card that will be coming up that I'll be able to uh, activate. I'll be able to use those tablets. And uh, since I'm not going to really be able to do anything else with my archaeologist, I'm going to go ahead and use this as a free action to get two of the compass tokens. Back to the AI. The AI is going to send an archaeologist onto a space where they're our uh, tablets so looking at what's available the only space that is open is this one right here well that last round i probably could have uh, gone ahead and possibly uh, explored a new site i didn't think about using my other um, assistant over here with the free action to go ahead and get a, another compass token i have three I would have been able to use that other card to uh, send my guy out, but that's what happens um, as my main action. I really, um, oh, I guess the one thing that I could possibly do is uh, I can do research and be able to move my uh, magnifying glass up. So the cost is two of the tablets and an arrowhead which I actually have on my board. So I'm going to go ahead and spend these and be able to move up on the research track. So we'll spend those and we will go ahead and move him up here. And so as a reward for reaching this space, I will get a, another compass token. Hmm. So let's see, this is starting to make me wonder about if I want to use these to explore the island more or if I want to start picking up um, start picking up some of my uh, extra um, artifact cards. <laughs> Sorry I had to think about that for a second. Okay the AI is going to take the artifact card with the highest point value and so the one with the highest point value is the star charts and i was kind of looking at this one because this would have been great pay one gold coin to activate any two different of the uh, basically the basic sites that were already unlocked at the beginning of the game but unfortunately he took that one so that's out so we have a new one that's out this guardian's crown he costs four and move a guardian from a site you occupy to an unoccupied um, either basic site or a level one site with no guardian or with no guardian there and uh, activate it. So uh, it's not as good as what I was looking at before. So this is going to actually uh, make my decision for what I'm going to do easier. So uh, back to me, what I'm going to end up doing is I am going to. Uh, pass for my main action and then I'm just going to go ahead and discard these two cards. I'm not going to keep them for the next round. So uh, I am going to, I'm actually done taking actions this particular round. We'll finish up with what the AI is doing. So the next AI action is that they are going to uh, defeat a guardian if there is one on their site. If not, they're going to go ahead and explore. So the next thing that, so uh, we'll have to move up his magnifying glass on the track. And I have to look and see what his preference is. The preference is going to actually be on the right. So as he moves forward, he will go up onto this particular space over here and take this uh, bonus, temple bonus token and just remove it from the game. 
Next action is he's going to explore and then he's going to take one of the assistants. So I'm just going to, the only direction that he can move up is um, straight ahead of him. So we'll move him up here into this space. And then he's going to take a um, an assistant and we're going to be looking at the piles and seeing who has, which pile has the most. And it looks like at this point, there, the uh, two, these two piles here are the same, and the arrow is showing preference to the one that will be on the right. So this assistant is going to go out of the game. And finally, the last action is he is going to send out one of his archaeologists to a spot where there is a gold token, and the only space that's available is this one right here. Okay, so the AI passed. That's the end of round number three. So the first thing that we're going to do is return all of our archaeologists where they go. Again, um, he was able to send out all of his pieces. So uh, being able to have a, a round that was good in terms of being able to deploy people. Uh, next thing that I'm going to do is shuffle all of the cards that were in my play area and they're going to end up going behind the draw deck that uh, we currently have. So these cards will go under there like so. Put those on top. And we will go ahead and refresh our assistance like that. And then what I'm going to do next is we will go ahead and exile the two cards that are on the board on the opposite side of the staff. So this one is gone. And... This one is gone. We will go ahead and move the moon staff. These two cards will slide down. And we have two new artifacts that are out. Uh, so we have the Trader Scales, which is upgrade uh, a component and get three gold coins. So it's slightly better than the one I had. And then we have this treasure chest, which would be to draw a card and uh, gain a gold coin. So. Uh, the next thing that I need to do is just shuffle up the AI tiles and draw five cards. Okay, guys, starting round four. I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit more here. Uh, maybe see about moving my uh, moving my two tokens up on the research track because uh, I really want to be able to get a lot of points, and um, so. You know, this is going to be the next two rounds is going to be quite a bit more uh, exciting when I start seeing some things. Obviously, some of the cards that I bought uh, the last round, uh, they are up right away because of the way that this deck building aspect goes, which I'm really enjoying. By the way, I, I like how that, that works. Uh, sometimes in a regular deck building game, uh, they go into a discard pile and it gets shuffled and it could be a few hands before they show up. So we're starting to see the benefit of those cards a little bit sooner. So let's get started and see what the AI is going to do. So the AI is going to kick off round four by uh, going ahead and doing a research action and then uh, taking an assistant and moving it out of play. If we look at the decision arrow, the decision arrow is pointing to the left. So we will go ahead and move up this way here, taking out this bonus temple bonus tile there. And then also we go over to the spot where the assistants are. This is the stack that has the most on there. So say goodbye to our pilot. The pilot is out of the game. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do on my turn as a free action is I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this and get two compass tokens. So I have enough stuff here to uh, be able to um, explore deeper in the island. My main action, I'm going to play this ostrich and I'm hoping that this is going to uh, work out for me. So the first thing that I'm going to do is draw a card and I'm hoping for a card that will have a, uh, a car on it which it didn't. So um, I guess my plan for that was uh, now I can basically send one of my guys out with a discount of one uh, car. So I guess right here I can do two things. I can either 
uh, go to this these spots here for free. And uh, this one would be really useful. I can take an item card without having to pay for it. This one will give me one gold token and two tablets. Uh, I'm going to need tablets in order to be able to advance up on the research track. So as much as I would like to get another item... Um, actually, one of the cards that's up there... I'm going to actually go here. And I'm going to choose to take an item card without having to pay its cost. And the card that I'm going to choose is this Carrier Pigeon. Which right now, uh, this as a free action will allow me to get two tokens. Actually, do I want to do that? Because it won't show up until the next round. Maybe. And I've got a number of cards that are in there. Actually, I'm not going to choose this Carrier Pigeon. I'm actually going to go ahead and go to this site and take the immediate benefit of getting the two tablets right away because I have access to them immediately and then also take that gold token. So I think that that's a better, uh, a better move there. I was kind of disappointed now um, about that. However, um, I can actually um, maybe explore... Oh, actually, no, that's not a main action. I was going to hopefully be able to uh, open up a spot on the on the island, but um, I think that I'm going to be in good shape for that on uh, my next turn. Let me go back to the AI, and uh, they're going to put out one of their archaeologists on a space that has a an arrowhead, which is right here, so taking up that space. Okay, uh, I think on this turn um, I am going to play this parrot, and um, this is going to be basically discard a card to gain a jewel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this fear card to discard and take a jewel and put this down here. This is going to put me in a uh, good shot to be able to uh, advance on the research track. The AI is going to place an archaeologist on a spot where there are uh, compass tokens. So the closest one is going to actually be this one here, or the best choice for him is going to be that one to block that one off. Okay, um, so on my turn, I am debating if I want to go ahead and open up uh, a space on the island or if I want to go ahead and uh, do research in advance that way. I, I, can, I can do both things. It's just a matter of what I would like to do first. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a way to draw any additional... Well, I do have, actually, additional cards. Um, hmm. But then, if I use my sea turtle... I would be able to draw a card, but then I'd be able to settle uh, with a discount of one boat. And, uh, you know, I may actually do that. Uh, just because I can get an extra gold token, or maybe I could take another jewel. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, play that. I'm going to play the Sea Turtle. And I will draw a card, which gives me a gold there. And then I can immediately settle one or send out one of my archaeologists to a spot at a discount of one boat. And I'm actually going to go here to this space. I will take a jewel and I will take a um, tablet. And then I will also take a fear card. And the fear card will go on the bottom of my draw deck. So unfortunately, it's a one point hit uh, to my game maybe i'll be able to exile something i'm not really sure yet if um now the card that was allowing me to do that is gone the torch but um i actually will be able to make up those points by being able to uh advance on the research track so i think that that was a a good move um i think one of the other things that i'm going to do as a free action is to go ahead and uh, discard or use this one here to promote one of my tablets into an arrowhead. And 
I think that that's all I'm going to uh, do right now. The AI is going to uh, defeat a guardian that would be on its space if there was one, which there isn't. Otherwise, he's going to go ahead and do research, and the preference is going to be going up to the left. And so as we move up on the track, he doesn't really have a choice as to where he's going to go. Is this going to move up to this space here? So you can see that he's advancing almost every, well, every round he has the opportunity to research at least once, possibly twice, and moving up. So I have to try to keep pace with him because uh, where they end up with points is going to be, uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be hard for me to uh, catch up with him that way. So uh, back to me at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose to uh, do research. And so let's look at where I'm at and what I'm going to have to spend. So I'm looking to move up my magnifying glass uh, because it's the only one that can reach the top. And I have a couple of different choices on the board. I can spend uh, a gold token and a uh, tablet and an arrowhead. To go to one spot I can spend, which I think is probably going to be the best way for me to do that because um, I will have some gold coin, gold tokens to be able to do uh, some things a little bit further and I want to try to preserve my jewels as much as possible. So I guess I'm going to spend a uh, gold, a tablet, and an arrowhead and we will go ahead and move up to this space right here. Uh, as a bonus I will get a compass token from that tile and then also uh, the level that I'm on I will also be able to gain a compass token as well so that was a good move there uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to continue on and uh, advance a couple of more times researching a couple more times this round the AI is going to go ahead and take the artifact with the highest point value which is actually going to be this treasure chest worth three points so that would go in his pile there and a new one comes out hunting arrows which will uh was it take a fear card and get two arrowheads so back to me i think the next option that i'm going to go ahead and do is i am going to do some more research and try to move my magnifying glass up so if you see here, the cost is going to be one gold token and one jewel, which I will go ahead and spend those from my player board. And I will move up to this space here. And as a bonus, I will get a compass token. So right now I'm sitting on a bunch of compass tokens. So I think maybe on my next turn, I'm either going to research again, or I'm actually going to have to start uh, using, uh, at least purchase an artifact, and then I'll have some stuff set up for the final round to actually uh, discover some new sites. Hey, the AI is going to send off one of his archaeologists to a spot where there is a tablet. So the closest one, or actually the one that he's going to go to, is right there. Hey, on my turn, I think right now what I'm going to uh, want to do is uh, research again. So. Um, looking at where I'm at, and I would really would have liked to have been able to take a temple bonus, uh, but I do not have the tablets and the uh, arrowhead to be able to move up on this side. So um, what I'm going to end up doing over here is paying a compass token and a jewel to be able to move up to this space. And then as a bonus there, I will be able to draw a card, which will give me another gold token. So right now I'm actually catching up to the, uh, the AI, which is good. I don't want him to get too far ahead of me and start collecting uh, a lot of points. Okay, the next move, the AI is going to discover a new uh, a level 2 site, and we're going to have a um, guardian that's going to go on there, and the preference is going to be all the way to the right. So all the level two spaces are over here. So we're actually going to go to this spot right here, sending out one of his archeologists and he will collect these two tokens. So we have um, one of these idols is already something that he has. So on the player board, we'll go in the little minus one pile. And this other one is like the promotion one. 
that will go ahead and go on his board there. The next thing is we will have a level two tile coming onto the board, which will be this one right here. Uh, take a fear card, two tablets and two arrowheads, really, really good spot there. And then we will go ahead and put out one of these guardians, which this one is this uh, bird. So you're gonna have to have a uh, foot travel card and a, uh, a jewel. The boon is it gives you an airplane, so it's a wild transportation mode there. All right, so back to me uh, on my turn. Let's see, what am I sitting on? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight of these compass tokens. Um, actually, as a free action, we're going to go, we'll use that one there and this one here. So we have, we're up to 10 right now. And then I think for my main action, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually purchase one of these artifacts. And the one that I'm going to go after is this one right here, this hunting arrows. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my play area. And I will take a fear card and two arrowheads. So we'll take the two arrowheads. Actually, we're going to spend our four compass tokens to get that. So one, two, three, four, put those on the board. And uh, all I need to do is put a fear card on the bottom of my draw pile, which I will go ahead and do that right now. I know I'm taking a hit for that, but I need to have those arrowheads and be able to uh, advance and do some other things. So I think that the cost is worth it to be able to do that. Um, I have some gold tokens in front of me right now that's going to be the uh, I'm going to have to use those eventually to be able to uh, move up actually I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and use both of these uh, as free actions to take gold tokens to set me up for my next hey the AI is going to go ahead and send out one of his archaeologists to a spot where there is a ruby and the only one that is available is the one that is down on the bottom right there so we'll send him out there hey on my turn um, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, research and so the spot that I'm looking at uh, is right here needing to spend uh, one gold token one tablet and one arrowhead which i actually do have on my player board so we'll go ahead and spend those we have gold token a tablet and an arrowhead we'll put those in the respective spots on the board we will cross this bridge over here and then we will also get a compass token now hopefully next round um, i will be able to uh, move up one more spot because um, I will have at least my assistant to be able to do a free action and upgrade that arrowhead into a jewel. So um, I have that going for me. Oh, and one other thing, um, after purchasing that one artifact card, a new one should have come out. So Pegasus, uh, a passage shell. And uh, so that one would allow me to basically send an archaeologist on to uh, one of the basic sites, the little tent sites, uh, for free, and then I can activate it twice instead of once. That's actually pretty nice, but uh, at this point I don't have any archaeologists to use. Okay, the AI is uh, going to take an item with the lowest point value, so looking up there, they both are um, have point values of one, and the preference is going to be the one on the right. So this flask We'll go into his score pile, and a new item card will come out, which is a journal. It says exile that card to research with the um, notebook token for free. Uh, that actually might be something that I might want to do if I can get some gold next round. Um, that would be able to bump him up, get me some extra points, and actually promote one of my assistants. So back to my turn, I think at this point I am going to choose to pass. I have played all my cards out and uh, I just have some resources and things that I'm going to have uh, to get ready for the next round. All right, and the last action that the AI is going to take this round is he's going to go ahead and set out uh, an archaeologist onto a spot where there 
is gold and the only spot open is going to be this one over here so he will do that so that's going to be um, his final action so back to him he's going to pass and that's going to be the end of the round all right that concludes the the fourth round of the game so what we're going to end up doing then is taking back all of our archaeologists to and again he was able to send out all of his archaeologist figures Okay, next we're going to uh, take all of our cards from our play area. We're going to shuffle those all up and be able to get those, you know, get them ready for the next round. So hopefully we'll have, um, I don't know if we'll see any of these cards. I still have a number of cards in my draw pile, although we have added, we did play out a lot of these. So we'll see. Um, and we'll go ahead and refresh our assistance finally we're going to exile these two cards so this is gone and this carrier pigeon is gone we slide this down to the fifth round so we're going to be in the final round and two new cards come out the serpent's gold and the inscribed blade um, so that was that one's actually pretty nice. Research with a discount of either an arrowhead or two tablets. That's a really good one. Useful for me. Or take a fear card and four gold. And so uh, the last thing that we need to do is just uh, get the AI tiles ready and uh, draw five cards. All right. We're getting ready to start the final round. And uh, before we get to the AI's turn... I do not have a very good hand um, at all. So I'm going to be really, really limited as the things I'm going to do. So I'm hoping, uh, basically, I'm going to use the automobile as a way to uh, discover a new site. But I have both of the, I have two fear cards in my, uh, in my hand. So, and they're not going to really be able to do anything other than maybe um, I can choose to take a, a basic action. Uh, and I'm, if I'm going to be looking at doing that, I'm going to have to uh, act quickly on that because um, I need to get a jewel for researching. And I know that there's a spot where the uh, AI token is going to go there, but we'll see what happens. Uh, so the AI is going to go first. Before the AI draws... His action token. I just wanted to uh, bring you up to speed as to where we are at on um, in terms of tokens that he has collected. And so uh, each one of these are worth three points. We do have a duplicate one over here. This is going to be like a, a minus one, so it'll only be two points for him. So uh, he's done a pretty good job of um, exploring uh, the island and discovering new sites for us. Uh, I have not really done much except for one. But anyways, on his turn, um, he's going to go ahead and send an archaeologist out to a spot where there is a tablet, with the preference being to the right. And so if we look on the board, um, it's going to go actually to this top one up here, because it would always go from the highest uh, level on down, and so there are tablets there. So he's going to take up one of the primo spots on the board. Okay, so I've been, I'm thinking about uh, what I want to do since I only have two archaeologists on the board. And I have a couple of things that I would like to do. I could potentially discover two sites and get a bunch of benefits here by using both of them. I think if I use my assistance, I will be able to... Um, do what I need to do. I can promote that arrowhead up to a jewel, um, and I also have two free actions to be able to get more of these exploration or uh, compass tokens. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is um, let's see. I'm debating if I really need to if I have the tablet. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, do an uh, discover a new site and so I'm looking at going to one of these two spaces because I have uh, an auto I have automobiles to go here so I can go to these two 
So, um, and I will get the benefits of the face up tile. So my choice is either taking a gold token or being able to exile a card. This is actually going to give me, uh, um, this will move me in a direction of being able to get rid of one of those fear cards that are in my, um, I actually should, I probably should play them out at some point. Um, because I think they can only be, I think that when I exile a card, it could be from my hand or my play area. So that will be good. So I'm going to actually go to this space right here. So I will send out one of my archaeologists, and then I'm going to pay the transportation cost, which is two cars. And then I'm going to take those idols and uh, so I only get the benefit of the of the one. The other one is just going to be three points. So I'm going to be able to exile a card, and that will go face down. And then the other one just goes face down onto the chest area. So I actually have two things. If I really need to do stuff, I can uh, use those free actions that are available on my player board. And by exiling a card, I will exile this fear card, so it'll actually go back onto the uh, draw stack over here okay that's the first part now we get to put out a token and we get to activate it and so this is actually pretty good i'm going to get two tablets and a jewel one two and this jewel here let's go on the board and then finally we do awaken a guardian which is um going to be like this t-rex thing and to overcome it, I need to discard a boat and an arrowhead. So um, I actually have an arrowhead, and I could promote one to be able to do that. So I actually could get five points by overcoming that on another turn. So things, I think, are going to be looking uh, pretty decent for me. All right, so we're going to flip this over, and he's going to take the... Uh, item that has the lowest point value well there's only one item out there he's taking that journal going in his thing there and new one comes out a fishing rod it costs two gold it's worth two points if i have extra gold i might be able to i might pick that up and so there it is up there it's uh cost two gold worth two points might actually be something just worth getting in my uh deck for points at the end of the game so all right, let's get back to what I've got to do. So on my turn, I'm going to do research. I want to get out and get in front of the AI. So in order to move up, I need to spend a gold, a compass token, and a jewel to move up. And so I will go ahead and spend those. I have my gold, I have my jewel, and I have a compass token. So I'll put those on their spaces on the board. And we will go ahead and move up to this space here. And when we get up, we will go on to the, I will take the 23-point space. And then as a bonus, I get to choose which one of these two to bonus tokens I want. Do I want either a tablet or do I want a gold? And um, looking at being able to get additional bonus points there by researching further... Uh, I think that at this point I am going to want to take a, uh, a gold. Um, yes, I think I'm going to take the gold. So this one will actually go back on its space. This gets discarded and I will take a gold token there. And put that on my player board. So I have reached that point first. I can continue further on now to uh, discover the temple and get additional points on my turn. Uh, I don't know, at this point I'm going to hold off on my free actions till I can think a little bit more about what I want to do. So the AI is going to uh, do research and take an assistant. With the assistant is going to be over on to the left. So if we look on the board, when he moves up and researches, he's actually going to go up and go right next to me into the 21 point slot and just remove that other bonus. And the assistant that's over on the left will be, uh, let's see if there's, they're all the same stack. So this is the assistant that is going to be removed from the game. 
Okay, on my turn, uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is trying to, let's see, um, hmm, I've got a few things in mind here. I think what I'm going to end up doing first is using my, um, using my um, assistant here to upgrade this arrowhead to a jewel as a free action. Then, uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is uh, I am going to purchase an artifact and I am going to get this inscribed blade. And it is going to cost me two compass tokens, which I'm going to go ahead and spend. And then what this is going to allow me to do immediately is research with a discount of either an arrowhead or two of the... Uh, two of the tablets and once I get up to the once I'm up to this portion of the research track and I want to start uh, going into the temple and being able to get points uh, the way that this is going to go is um, I can eat underneath here is the cost so if I want a 2.1 here this is going to cost me a gold and two tablets this one here would cost me one jewel, or this one would cost me a, um, a compass token and an arrowhead. If I wanted to go to the next level, it would be both of those costs. That would be whatever is in front of it. And the 11 pointer is going to be the one that is um, going to be all three costs. And if I look on my board, if I look on my player board, and if I take a discount of an arrowhead, I will actually have enough to be able to take the 11 point tile so if i start moving from uh, the cost from left to right the first one says it needs a gold and two tablets so i have that and then i have a jewel which is the next one and then the last space says that there is an uh, needs a compass token it needs a compass token and an arrowhead well i don't need the arrowhead i'm just going to spend the compass token so these are all the re the tokens that i'm going to spend and then I will go ahead and take this 11 point tile and that is mine. So that's a huge, uh, huge move for me on that turn to be able to do that. So I uh, wanted to be able to try to make up for uh, some of these things. I've got, the, like I said, I got the fear cards and I also have uh, been losing points to the, to the AI because he keeps taking the highest value cards and he also has uh, quite a bit more uh, in terms of the idols. We will go ahead and refill this with the uh, Pathfinder staff, which says relocate a placed um, archaeologist to either a level two or level one space site and, um, I mean, a level one or like a tent site and activate it. But uh, let's get down to the AI and let's see what the AI is going to do here. Um, on his turn, he will go ahead and choose to send an archaeologist to a spot where there are um, compasses and preference is going to be to the right. But uh, on this particular space, we're just going to go right here. Okay, um, on my turn, uh, this is probably... I'm really debating what I want to do with this if I really want to end up with possibly taking another fear card, uh, which may happen. Um, I have my one archaeologist. I would like to be able to uh, discover a space and get some more points, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. And at this point, I am going to uh, look at my options. I only have enough of these compass tokens to be able to do something that is uh, these level one buildings. So if I look across the way at uh, what my options are to be able to gain as a reward, uh, um, I can either take a, um, I can either take a compass token or I can refresh a um, one of my assistants or I can take a tablet and I think at this point, I'm probably going to end up taking the one with the tablet. So I'm going to sp send my guy here, spending my three uh, compass tokens. 
And then also I have to pay the cost of a car, which will be this card right here. So the first thing that I do is I take this and I will get a tablet and I place that face down on my board. So there's a tablet. And then we're going to go ahead and put out a space and be able to activate it. And this is going to give me a compass token and an arrowhead. The arrowhead will be useful for overcoming that other guardian, hopefully. And then the guardian that comes out here is actually an eagle. Whoops. Sorry, I put it on the wrong one. goes there. All right. So I have two things that are going to require arrowheads in order to overcome them. The This uh, particular one here would be more useful because then I would be able to exile a card and that will offset the uh, one point that I'll probably end up losing by not being able to get to that other one unless uh, I were to be able to do... I don't see the card out there. There used to be one that said do not gain any... Uh, do not gain any fear cards from the guardians this turn, but that's not going to happen. Uh, the other thing that I could do is if I'm looking to see what I would need on the board, um, I would I could potentially move some of these up, giving up points um, to try to take additional actions. But I don't really know if I'm going to want to do that quite yet or not. So I still have three of these, um, but every time that I do this, I'm giving up points. That would be, you know, if I did it twice, two things, that's five points that I'm giving up. It's a wash uh, just to be able to get one of those guardians. Although I guess I could come out one point ahead. Um, but there's no guarantee if I chose to try to draw a card, if that would give me something that would uh, give me the proper uh, type of transportation, because I need a boat over there. I need an airplane here, and in my hand I only have an airplane and I have the uh, that uh, fear card, which is only a boot. So, uh, we'll have to see how I'm going to go ahead and play out the last couple of um, actions on, in this game. So back to the AI, and he is going to go ahead and send out an architect, I mean not an architect, an archaeologist, I don't know why I keep saying architect. Archaeologist to a space on the board that has a jewel. So we're going to go right there. Okay, back to me on my turn. I think uh, my obvious choice is to go ahead and overcome this uh, guardian. And so it is going to require an arrowhead and a, an airplane in terms of transportation. While I have here, I'm discarding my airplane and this arrowhead and I will be able to take this and I'm going to go ahead and use this boon uh, right away as a free action to be able to exile a card and I will go ahead and exile this fear card so I get that out of my deck so that's it for my turn there hey back to the AI he's going to spend uh, send out one of the archaeologists to a spot where there is an arrowhead, which the only one that we have is this one on the board over here. Okay, back to me. Um, looking at where I'm at for the round, I think I've accomplished the, the most that I could do. Uh, I really don't want to start using free actions and, and wasting my idols um, for things that may not actually turn out. So. Uh, as a final action for me, I'm going to pass. Uh, so I'm done actually taking actions for the rest of the game. We'll see what the AI ends up doing. So the AI is going to, um, in the last round, he is going to discover a level 2 area. So we'll go ahead and his preference is going to be to the left. So this is, we'll send an archaeologist over here. He will collect these tokens. So he already has um, a gold idol. So that will go on the minus one pile. And the other one is a compass, which will go on to his board. And then finally, we will put out a level two space on the board right there like that. So that was his action there. We'll go back to his board, seeing what the next thing he's going to do is 
Um, actually, in this round, because it's round five, he is not going to do anything this turn. So we kind of got a, a little reprieve of not being able to perform an action. Uh, the next one is he's going to send out uh, an archaeologist to where there is uh, gold, with a preference being to the left. So on the board, we're just going to send him right here. And the very last action for our AI is he is going to take an artifact with the highest point value, um, with preference going to the right so he'll actually take the um, guardian's crown and we'll put that into his uh, pile down here so um, with that being said then all these cards will slide down and this would refill and that is actually going to be the end of the round and it's actually the end of the game now so we're going to have to go through and total up all of our points. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and go over the scorecard and where we have all of our points and where they came from. So the first thing that we're going to score is points that we received on the research track. So we're going to look and we will see where we're at. And so I was the, I'm the yellow player, so I will have 23 points there, the red player has 21, but I also get to add on uh, another point for where I was at with my uh, notebook. So that would give me a total of 24 points um, for the uh, where we are on the research track. So in that point, I'm actually in the lead 24 to 21. Uh, the next item on the scorecard is going to be where we have our uh, basically the bonus tiles for researching the lost temple. And uh, so I was actually able to get one for 11 points. So um, I basically have 11. The um, AI did not manage to uh, get any on that particular, uh, in this particular game. The next thing that we need to do is we need to look at our. Uh, idols and so on our opponent's board we look over here and each of those tokens that they have are worth three points a piece and then he has uh, the duplicates are going to only be worth two a piece so we have one two three four five five times three is 15 and then we have 16 17 18 19 points for our idols over there on our board we will we get to two different uh, types of uh, points. First, we're going to get the three points for each of our our idols. So one, two, three, four is twelve. Plus, I'm also going to get points here for each of these spaces that I did not use. So twelve plus two is fourteen. Fourteen plus three is seventeen. Seventeen and four is twenty-one. So that puts us up twenty-one. So we actually won that by two points. Uh, the next thing that we have to look at is the uh, guardians that we um, overcame. And our AI only overcame one, so four, uh, five points for him. And we actually overcame two guardians, so ten points for us there. Then the next thing that we have to do is we're going to add up the points that we have from our uh, cards that we acquired over the game. Um, so what we'll do is just add up all of the uh, victory points that are on the bottoms of the cards. And when we got down to it, the uh, AI actually won that one. He had 15 points in cards. I had 13. And then the last part here is our penalties for fear cards. Well, the AI does never take uh, fear cards, so he had a zero, and I actually had three of them in my deck, so that would give me minus three points. So at the end of the game, when I total up all the points, the AI had 60 points, and I actually had 76. So uh, the last time that I played against the AI, I actually was um, I actually lost. So. Um, this time uh, I was actually able to redeem myself against it. But anyways, this is uh, the Lost Ruins of Arnak. Playing the solo rules using the, uh, the bird temple. 
So uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this game. Is this something that you'd want to add to your library? What do you think were some of the memorable moments during this game that you saw? What would you have done differently? Uh, let me know what that. Um, if you like the video, please click like and hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can keep notified of all the things that we have coming up. Uh, I do have future plans with uh, the Lost Ruins of Arnak with another uh, session where we're going to use the opposite side here with the, uh, the Serpent Temple. And there is also going to be a solo campaign that is going to be released by the publisher that I plan on publishing as well. So I hope that you guys will tune in and check those out as well. All right, you guys, thank you for watching, and we will catch you again soon. Bye-bye.